let's just say that the last year and a half has been a little bit unusual. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the Mindful Homestead. It has been quite the year. I can't, I can't even use the phrase unless you've been living under a rock because even if you've been living under a rock at this point, you know what's been going on the last year and a half. It has been a global pandemic and there've been a lot of changes that people have had to make to their lives. And we are certainly no exception to that. Um, living here in the woods, we haven't been totally isolated from it. Uh, Jackie has seen it with her work. I've seen it with my work. And it's a super hot day out today. So what I wanted to do was as we're going around taking care of the animals, making sure they have fresh food, making sure they have nice clean water, that's not good and cold for them. I wanted to talk a little bit about how we've seen changes related to the farm because a lot of people have seen the same changes out in the world, you know, having to wear masks, social distancing, all of that stuff. And I don't need to go over that and talk about how that's affected things. But I, what I wanted to do was maybe break down for folks who are not farmers or who are aspirational farmers, they wanna get into it one day. And I wanna break down and talk about how it's affected us, uh, the changes that we've had to make, the things we've had to adapt to, and how they're going now a year and a half into the whole thing. Uh, and if there's any light at the end of the tunnel, I guess you could say. One of the first things COVID has affected is pricing of feed. And this is gonna stretch across. You'll see a few other things I talked about today. Um, feed prices have gone up. And a lot of that has to do with the cost of transportation. You know, a, a lot of it had to do with shortages in the supply chain. Feed mills weren't running at full capacity. Uh, now we're seeing transportation cost increases. And all of that is being passed on to the consumer. So your feed is going to be a little bit more expensive now than it was a year ago, two years ago. Last year about this time, it wasn't too bad yet, um, but now we're seeing feed prices that are, you know, two and three dollars higher per 50 pound bag of feed than, than you saw last year. And you might say, well, two, three bucks a bag. What's the big deal there? Right now, these guys are getting five pounds of feed a day each. We have nine of them. That's 45 pounds of feed, basically a full bag. I'm dumping a full bag out for them every day. That's what they're eating. So we are spending, as of right now, about $18.99 a day on feed. You know, if you're a small producer like we are, $20 a day, say 30 bucks a month you're talking 500 dollars a month on feed which is when you're going to eight months with pigs that's a lot of feed so that's affected us so far luckily we've been able to mitigate it in a couple different ways we haven't had to raise our pricing on pork uh we've changed our pricing stru structure a little bit but the net pricing for the customer is going to be the same so it's not affecting anything in that regard which is great all right can you get one of the buckets all right, let's bring the buckets up. We gotta feed the turkeys. Here, Daddy, you'll get the other one. And a good thing that has happened with our customers is that there are more of them. During the pandemic, we've managed to hang on to our existing customers and expand our customer base a little bit. 
Uh, we don't think we'll ever get bigger than 10 pigs, so figure maybe we'll add one more pig next year. This is where we're going to keep things capped. However, throughout the pandemic, people have been looking for ways to get their food sources a little bit closer to home. And for us, that's actually played out as a benefit where we've had increased demand. We have a waiting list at this point. Um, you know, for year to year, if people drop off, we have spots to fill already. So that's been awesome. And I'm not gonna complain about that at all. With the increased customers though, it begs the question that how we responded to that and how are we handling it? Well, for one, I'm very quickly learning to manage spreadsheets much better than I have in the past. But two, we've kind of sort of expanded the offerings on the farm. Watch out for the camera. That's right, everyone. We have taken to raising dinosaurs. Hey, that's my wedding ring. What are you doing? And when I say dinosaurs, I don't mean dinosaurs. I mean, we're raising turkeys. Uh, turkeys was a great way for us to kind of pivot and add something else that wasn't pork to our offerings for customers. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit lower price than pigs. It's higher price than chickens. So it was a great option where when we wanted to add something to buffer our tail end of the year, right around when pigs are getting processed, uh, turkeys are also gonna be in the mix. And we really like having them around. I think we may have some pet turkeys here on the farm in the future after this year with our birds. All right, now let's talk about the three biggest downsides to this whole thing. I'm actually gonna find a shady spot to talk because it's hot out. So big downside number one to being a small farm going through a global pandemic, cost of livestock. Uh, over the last year, our cost of pigs has gone up approximately $50 per pig. Uh, this year's batch we paid $125 for, which is all in all right now, not a bad price. It's actually pretty good. I saw piglets this past spring going for as much as $150 to $175, um, which is crazy. Five years ago, you were looking at piglets that were $75, $80. Bucks. So the price of livestock has gone up. Um, our cost basis in feeder pigs for the year, you're now looking at, you know, I'll say 25 to 30% higher than it was two years ago when we started doing pigs. Conversely, I just ordered our batch of meat birds for the fall and price has gone up on those as well. Uh, chicken pricing on both egg layers and meat breeds uh, has gone up about 50 to 60 cents per bird, depending on the quantity that you're doing. When those birds only cost like two bucks to begin with and now they're pushing up around three, uh, you're looking at a pretty significant increase in, in your cost basis of the chickens. Granted, at the end of everything, you're talking only a dollar per bird off of your profit, um, but that's still something to think about. You know, if you're doing 50 birds, that's $50 more you'll have to budget at the beginning of your meat bird season. All I can really chalk this up to is that there's an increased demand on people who raise pigs, uh, hatcheries that raise out chickens. There's a lot of people now that have kind of come to the realization that we can be closer to our food and we can do things to be a little bit more self-sustainable. And while I'm all for that, uh, I kind of wish the systems on the back end would kind of catch up with that demand and, and get these prices back down a little bit because it would be nice to go back to the way things were a couple years ago in terms of pricing of livestock. Another pricing thing that's gone up that's really had some impact on our farm was the cost of lumber. And I debated even putting this in because this is not just a farming issue. This is kind of across the housing market, the really anything. If, if you ever use wood to build things, you know the cost of lumber has gone up. And let me talk about how it's affected us. We're a growing farm, meaning we're, we're getting bigger every year and with getting larger as a farm 
comes infrastructure improvements that we need to do. Behind me, you can see the new Hensher hut. Uh, this was our first chicken coop that I ever built. Originally, it was a four by eight structure, um, and then it became a four by eight structure with a run attached off the side. Then as we got more chickens, it expanded into the entire yard that you see, but the roosting area, the inside space remained that four by eight coop. Last year, we ran our pigs out here with the intention of eventually moving the chickens into this space. And part of that move involved me building a much larger mobile chicken coop that would be situated back here. As you can maybe see, there is no chicken coop back there. I'll link a video up in the corner from my friend Chris over at Rocket 8 Farm where he talks about the cost involved in building a chicken tractor and how it's gone up during the pandemic. But what I'm getting at here is that some small farms have either simply had to absorb the cost of increased lumber, which has gone up almost double and triple in some cases, um, or some farms have chosen not to expand. We brought in more layers this year, uh, six, so not a ton, but for now, we're making this work. I'm gonna add some roosting bars in that outdoor run area. It's covered, so I don't have to worry about owls. I don't have to worry about anything getting in there and attacking the birds in the night. Uh, it's got the electric fence still, but these birds are not in the most prime area that they could be. And that is simply a mechanism, like I said, of the fact that lumber is so expensive right now. And arguably the last thing that's affected us on the farm this year, and this kind of ties into the lumber thing, is availability of things that we need to run the farm and operate the farm and maintain it. This is a box blade that I just picked up for our tractor. It's made by Tartar. And I waited over three months for this thing. And ideally we would have liked to have had the driveway done. I've talked about this before. I wanted to have the driveway done about a, two months ago at least, uh, right as we were coming into spring. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I couldn't get this. It's just a combination of demand for these sort of things right now. Again, lots of people are home, lots of people are doing home projects and starting small farms, but it's also a combination of getting labor to build these things. They're not easy to make. You need to know how to weld and, and do a good job building them and then getting the raw materials to build them. Again, like lumber, prices of steel are up, prices of transportation are up. All of that kind of came together into making this sort of thing very hard to get. So like I said, I ordered this at the beginning of spring, hoping it would come in a month, and it took way longer to get that from the manufacturer. Nothing against them, it's not their fault, it's just what it is. I'm actually gonna do a whole separate video on this box blade. Uh, look for that probably next week. That doesn't go just for tartar though, down in the south. That goes for all makers of all tractor parts, whether it's even Kubota themselves or John Deere. You know, getting these things built right now is proving to be really hard and keeping up with demand is next to impossible. So hopefully in the next couple months, we'll see stuff start to come to be more available. But uh, but I would, I would bank on probably at least six or seven months out before we get back into kind of a general, um, back to what it used to be normal. So there you are. That's kind of how COVID has affected us here on our farm. Hopefully it's not so bad for you wherever you are. If you like this video, make sure to head down below and hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.